One of the more controversial assertions that Brown makes in this novel is that Mary Magdalene and Jesus were married and that Mary Magdalene was carrying Jesus' child when he was crucified. His evidence for this comes from writings that post-date the life of Jesus by at least a century and a half and that are expressions of fringe elements within Christianity called Gnostic the Gnostic movement, that are not intent or interested at all in historical truth, but in presenting a version of Jesus that matches up with their ideology. And so there's no evidence in scriptures, which are the most trustworthy resources that we have for knowing about the life of Jesus. There's no evidence in scriptures that they were married, or much less had a child. The evidence for Jesus not being married is extensive. I have in my library a collection of 39 volumes of early church material, both orthodox and unorthodox. This is small print, single spaced, double columned material. In none of this material is there any indication that Jesus was ever married. If Jesus had been married, uh, there probably would not have been a conspiracy to not make that clear. They would have been very proud of the fact. In fact, it was very Jewish to be married and to raise children. So there is no reason for the church to have a cover-up at all. And had Jesus been married, there would have been no effort to cover it up. The evidence that we have that Jesus didn't have children is basically the same evidence that we have that he wasn't married, plus one other feature. It's probably likely that the tradition that arose in the Roman Catholic Church, that priests be celibate and single, has its roots in the ministry and life of Jesus himself. Some people argue that if Jesus had children, his offspring would have been divine as well, and this would explain why he could not have had children, even hypothetically. But I think this is wrong. Mary is responsible in part for the birth of Jesus as a woman who is a sinner, and that doesn't prevent Jesus from being divine if God wants him to be divine when he's born. So the mixture of the human and the divine doesn't determine necessarily the nature of the outcome. If Mary and Jesus had a child, first of all, that's an ad hoc statement. There's not a shred of evidence uh, to bolster this contention. But if Jesus and Mary Magdalene had a child, one would wonder how we would treat the divine lineage of Jesus Christ. Would we begin to worship? Would they be a different class of people? Uh, look what we've done with the Shroud of Turin. Imagine a real flesh and blood line coming from Mary Magdalene and Jesus. It would have caused all kinds of theological and practical problems in the Christian church. So we could be very thankful that Jesus Christ was not married to Mary Magdalene, but in Scripture, he is married to the church, his body, which he wants to present to God as an unblemished, spotless bride when the new heaven and the new earth become a reality in time and for eternity. If Jesus had married Mary Magdalene, we would have read of it in the New Testament. There would have been no reason to keep it a secret. We know that Peter was married because there's a reference to his mother-in-law. And uh, so obviously, uh, we would have uh, read about it. Uh, the life of Jesus Christ is given to us in much detail. Oftentimes it is said, well, rabbis were expected to marry. Well, that may be true, but there is nothing that says that Jesus had to follow that tradition. He bucked tradition in so many different areas. Why not in this matter as well? Now, of course, marriage is honorable. Marriage is holy. But when you think of Jesus being absolutely perfect as the Son of God and having a divine nature, to have that Jesus... Uh, connected in the most intimate relationship imaginable to a sinner is just simply unthinkable. I often say that, yeah, I think Jesus could have married if he would have found someone as holy as he himself is, which, needless to say, has limited his options. One of Dan Brown's claims is that Jesus uh, was married to Mary Magdalene, but it wouldn't even have been in the conventional sense. It would be that Jesus was some kind of a sex partner was Mary. Where, where does that come from? He draws from the Gospel of Philip. The Gospel of Philip is not written until 250 A.D. and is a, a very spurious writing. 
in the Gospel of Philip, it says that Jesus kissed Mary on the lips and favored her above the other disciples. Now, the problem with that is it doesn't actually say he kissed her on the lips. It says he kissed her on the, and the document is actually torn at that point. It's fragmented. And so editors supplied the word lips at that point. It could have been he kissed her on the forehead. It could have been he kissed her on the cheeks. Now, the word that's used there is a, is a borrowed Greek word, and it actually has the meaning similar to koinonia, which means fellowship, much like the New Testament would speak of when it talks about a, a holy kiss, greeting one another. It has the liturgical meaning. On top of that, why Dan Brown's thesis is even more flawed is the Gospel of Philip, though it's uh, spurious, it doesn't even advocate marriage. It's actually a writing that is very anti-marriage, and it's written uh, 200 years after the actual events, considerably after the more reliable Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He goes on to claim that no way Jesus could have been considered single because being single would be unacceptable in Jewish culture. Not so. The Dead Sea Scrolls, which Dan Brown mistakenly refers to as referring to the life of Jesus, they, they don't refer to Jesus' life at all. They refer to a community called the Essenes, a group of Jewish people. Uh, this document that was found in 1947 that comes from the before the New Testament period talks freely about Jewish people who were, who were celibate, who were unmarried. It would have been quite normative for people like that, for males to remain unmarried and single in that culture, contrary to what Dan Brown would have us believe. Uh, if he would have had children, that, may have, that complicates the issue theologically much more for us. But if Jesus would have been married, uh, that's no particular problem theologically that I'm aware of. But the fact is, the historical record doesn't indicate any evidence that he was, in, that he was married. Uh, I think it gets thorny theologically, potentially at that point. Who would these children have been? Would they have been kind of like the Son of God? What would they have been? Uh, why I don't spend much time on that kind of a discussion is purely academic. There is zero evidence that Jesus had any physical offspring. In fact, uh, we instead are the brothers and the sisters of Jesus Christ. He has spiritual offspring, and that to me is a thrilling theological concept. Jesus was God incarnate. Jesus was God in the flesh. And if you propagate children from that, then don't they too have a chance of becoming God in some form? And that to me is heresy, because the Bible clearly says that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit all embody the Trinity. And to imply that there are others out there with some sort of godly lineage that way, I think is offensive. The ramifications of Jesus being married and having children, oddly enough, he is married and he does have children. After all, John the Baptist told us in the Gospel of John chapter 3 that Jesus is the bridegroom, that his baptism comes from heaven. Paul tells us that the bridegroom marries the bride. So Christ the bridegroom marries the bride, that is the, the wedding arrangement, and through baptism he brings people and unites them to his own divine nature so that we may participate in the divine nature of the bridegroom as sons and daughters.